Welcome everybody to the Tuesday, February to the uh, Tuesday, I'm February. On a, I'm on a, I'm on a select board meeting. I'll call you. Back. Uh, Tuesday, February twenty second. Um, select board meeting, and at six thirty will be a joint meeting of the select board and the finance committee. Call the meeting to order and. First item on the agenda is to approve the minutes of February 14th. They look great. They do. They do. So um, I'll make a Go. motion to approve those minutes. I'll second it. All right. Aye. All Aye. It's unanimous. We have no warrants tonight, but um, I was the only one that signed them from last week so far when I was there this afternoon. Just saying. It's okay. Oh, is that right? Aha. Uh -huh. And Erica, because she is for the you know, Erica is on the West Coast today with in, uh, in a family matter, so she she can't sign them till later this week. Um, meetings attended by select board members, Robert. We had a conservation commission site visit to yeah. visit the next amp site, but other than that, none. Um, yeah, I don't know that I, that I had any either. Any public comments? Nope. Unfinished business? No. Nope. New business. So there's an open space letter of support. So, um, Veronique, do you want to explain why we did that and what that is? Uh, sure. Let me get my copy here. Hang on a second. <laughs> <laughs> Since I just emailed it out to you, I should be able to find it. Yeah. Um, yeah so it's just a letter of support that's going along with the application. Um, that the FERCOG is sending out. So it's just, you know, just Conway saying um, that we do support this. It's for the um, open space. Uh, sorry, I'm just trying to open my letter here. There we go. So it's going to the Executive Office of Energy and Environmental Affairs. And it says the Conway Select Board is writing this letter of support for the updated open space and recreation plan um, prepared by the committee with the support of the FERCOG. Um, you know, so it's, it's basically saying the committee has thoughtfully conducted the community survey process and reflected on the feedback provided by the citizens of our community. Um, and it's just saying that the select board, um, you know, has reviewed it and supports its submission to their office for approval. Sounds perfect. Yeah. One of those things that can't hurt and doesn't cost. So those yeah. are... Those are two two big things in its favor. So um, make a, a motion to send the requested letter of support regarding open space. Uh, I'll second it. All in favor, aye. Aye. Okay. And then um, the next item, the highway department request for uh, pay raise for Jason Stone. Is Ron on? I am here. Yes. Hi, Ron. Uh, hey, Ron. Good evening, everybody. So, um, yes. so you know, I, I kind of know the back, some of the background. I think Bob was on the select board too, a couple years ago when, or whenever that was. Um, um, yep. When we last de dealt with this employee, and so um, you have a request for a pay raise. So just also to let you know, part of the semi new process here, um, I did start a new form. If somebody has a request for a pay raise, um, that they send it to me in writing and then I, you know, sign approval. So um, I definitely did approve of this and wanted to forward it to the select board and have Ron speak to his reasons for it. Excellent. Excellent. So, I mean, if if you care enough to do this, then that's just impressive all by itself. So why don't you tell us why? Well, uh, Jason, he is a really good worker. Um, he takes a lot of pride in what he does. And he is somebody that, um, even though he's had some issues in the past, if we had to replace him I don't think we'd ever it'd be really hard to find somebody to do the things that he does he takes charge in things um, he's a has a really good work ethic 
and I'm afraid that, you know, because it's, you know, he did have some issues and got, you know, demoted pretty good there. And I'm afraid that, you know, with the way things are out there, that there's positions out there that he could do, move on to if, um, I'm just afraid I'm going to lose him. So Ron, is this changing his job title? Coming. He would be moving back to foreman position, yeah. I see. Good, good. All right. And um, and so what's what's the uh, increased rate that we're voting on? It would be a dollar fifty more from what he's making now, which he's making eighteen ninety one now. So he'd be going up to twenty twenty dollars and forty one cents. Hmm. All right. Well, uh, I mean, I for one, I'm glad that things are got to where this is happening now. So this is this is good. So um, and I support this request. So uh, any, do you have any comments, Bob? I, you know, I'm glad he's still here and, and, uh, it's, all, you know, I'm glad to hear it's all working out. Yeah. Like, like you yeah. expected it would, but. Yeah. Yes. We did all expect it would. Yeah. Yeah. Good. So, um, I'll make a motion to approve the request of the, um, the highway department regarding no, Jason regarding Jason Stone. Yeah. And the, the exact dollar amount put it in there in, in the motion with dollar fifty more per per hour than current. So so and uh all in favor, aye. Aye. That is unanimous. Congratulations, Jason Stone, Foreman. Oh, and, uh, thank you. Rob. I I thank you both. That's um just takes a little bit off my plate with knowing that he's going to get a little more and not have to worry about if he's looking for something else. Hey. Um, yeah, I appreciate it. Thank you. Yes. With compliments. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Thank you. Ron, Ron right, I, I sent you a note that I got from a Conway resident recently about um, a good deed that one of your plow guys did. I don't know who plows down in the Williamsburg area. Maybe it's Jason. I don't know, but um, I, I, yes, I, I didn't see your note, but I I did get the note from the person. Oh, good. So it's 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 always n nice to get get notes yes. like that. So, <laughs> yep, yeah. it is. <laughs> good. Great. Thank you. Good. Alrighty. Thanks, Ron. And then you all have a good night now. You Thank too. You. Yep. Bye. So, uh, the next discussion on the all important topic of the dedication page of the for the annual reports for fiscal year 2021 to be handed out or handed out at town meeting and sent out before town meeting um and so and you know i get there there have been many years when we've only ever dedicated it to one person there have been years when we dedicated it to more than one person <clears throat> so we have a suggestion originated with the Long, long time former town clerk, Ginny Knowlton, um, now retired, but put in 40, 40 years as Conway town clerk. Um, and um, she recommended five names. And so um, do, do you have that right in front of you, Ronnie? What the five uh, names I are? I do, but. All right, you wanna read them off? Sure. Or, Should I read the little blurb with about each one too? But sure. So, uh, first one's a little hard for me. It's my wife, uh, Judy Laughlin, to acknowledge her years of dedication to the local schools. And uh, and Ginny said, I think we're talking decades. <laughs> um, anyway, yes, Judy had a lot. Yes. To, Judy was chair of the Conway Grammar School for many years. Uh, and Anthony Borton to acknowledge his years as selectman and his dedication to open space preservation in the town. And Marie Eichen to acknowledge her dedication to the environment by way of creating a composting program that lasted for many years at Conway Grammar and her dedication to bringing a composting program to the transfer station. And though her time was cut short on the Board of Health, she was committed to keeping Board of Health operations within the town and in recent years saw the board through a series of major changes in the food codes and in short-term rental codes. 
uh, you know, what can I say, Marie? Uh, and Mary, uh, Mary Merriam, uh, to acknowledge her dedication to the Conway Historical Society in maintaining town cemeteries and for the creation of the town flag that she designed to hang in the state house and Ann Hawks to acknowledge her many years as a member of the Fireman's Auxiliary. So those yeah. are the five names. Then I, I think that's a great suggestion and I would. Yeah. So I'll move to, move to, move to have the dedication in the town report be those five individuals. And thank you for reading that, Bob. And sorry, you know, when I asked you to do that, that. No, it, it, sorry, it, it, sorry. I, <laughs> It, it, it is, you know, I mean, it's a big time of the year for my family because Judy died a year ago next week. So anyway, right. died yeah. doing what she loved. So it's hard. It's got to be OK. Um, so I would second your your uh, motion. All right. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Unanimous. And. Um, so the last item in new business is an ARPA discussion. So, which is now a weekly feature, um, <laughs> just because we ne there's just different things that are sort of percolating to the surface, whatever. And so, um, you know, just uh, just to let you know, Bob. So one, um, we're sort of getting our heads around. Um, you know, just soliciting information from business owners, um, be, just to see to, to solicit what their business losses, if they're willing to specify their business losses, and um, uh, you know, in a narrative form, and, and do they have documents, et cetera, et cetera. And so, the basic the basic question, and I'll leave like, just to, to discuss with you, Bob, is the basic question: do do you prioritize in any way at all? Um, the brick and mortar retail biz, the four brick and mortar retail businesses in town that have a payroll um, versus all of the other types of businesses. And by by solicit, you know, to send out an initial thing just to those four, just to see what, you know, and then just a month later, follow up with, with the remainder of the businesses. That was, that was a suggestion. We won't go into who made those suggestions, yeah. but Ron. Um, well, uh, well, no, I mean, I, suggestion. I think this is exactly what the state intended this money for. Uh, and uh, but I think we should extend it to other businesses. And they're probably much right. smaller businesses. I mean, we're probably talking much smaller amounts. But, uh, you know, somebody that makes a product that they sell and all of that business all went down. Do you think at the same time, just do all the businesses, just just have open for open for all the businesses without sort of any prioritizing in time or anything to. Yeah. To one? OK. Yeah. OK, so that's that's useful feedback. Right? No, and I mean, and some of the businesses we have already given a slight break to just by by significantly cutting their license fees, uh, you know, I mean, whereas the other businesses don't have those. True, true, all right. And then the other thing, and just to start to think about is just how, how much do you wanna put as a, I don't wanna say pot of money, but how much do you wanna to put towards this particular goal? There are many different goals that we're going to be addressing hopefully with ARPA. I know there's gonna be a request coming for the public safety building and there's, and there's gonna be a request coming for the lift or other associated things with for town hall to make that ADA compliant and to make it that upstairs space useful. Um, I think we should see what the number is. You, you know, I, I don't know. It's hard. To, I yeah. mean, I can say twenty thousand or something, but I have no idea if that that may be much more than what the number would end up being. Uh, All right. All right. Um, but but I do think this is absolutely one of the things yeah. that the state really thought yeah, of. Yeah, I agree. Money going no, I agree. As you mentioned, Phil, I just want to say hopefully we'll have the numbers for you for next week 
for the more or less emergency drilling of a well up at the public safety building. There may be other requests up there later, but that's really an urgent need for, so hopefully we'll have that ready for next week. Great. Yeah, that is, um, that's an, that wasn't, I wasn't even contemplating that, but that's potentially another 10,000, whatever. So, um, so yeah, that, boy, when they, when they, when it was, when they said, here's, you know, you, Conway gets 560,000, <laughs> it seemed like so much. Yep. And now already, already, it doesn't seem like enough. Um, and, but it, it is nice just to, to, to have these discussions about what we want to spend money on is such a breath of fresh air. It's so, so unlike everything else that we've been doing these past two years of pandemic life. So, um, all right. So we're, we are a little bit early ahead of the 6.30 joint meeting. So, um, Bronnie, do you want to do your town administrator update? Sure, sure. Did you want to take any? Um, oh, no, sorry. I guess that is the next one. Um, yes. So we were speaking earlier about the Conway flag um, and Pat Lynch has agreed to research methods of restoring the quilted Conway flag that we have in the Field Memorial Library. Um, for those who don't know, there were two made and one sits in the state house and the other one's here in town. Um, it's been well treated in the library, but it's not um, it's not like under any kind of protection. It's just hanging there. So I'm sure it could use a thorough cleaning. And then we wanted to look into ways to preserve it for the future. So um, framed, framed under glass, something. Yeah, whatever the method is. So Pat was willing to take on researching that. And then once she has quotes, we um, were looking at the potential for asking um, the CPC for some CPA funds for historic preservation of the flag. So um, that's one item. And then as many- Do you know if the state house ever does anything for the one that's hanging in the state house? I I've seen the one in the state house and it's just, you know, hanging from the ceiling along with 300 and whatever it is, 30 other flags. I have no idea. No, I, sh I should ask them. I don't know if they're ever taken down and cleaned or, or what. I have no idea. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that has to be done carefully. Um, there are definitely ways to do it that can damage it actually in the long run. So you have to be careful about how you deal with yeah with fiber. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Maybe I'll ask them and see if I can find out. Um, and then, as I'm sure many have already heard, the Conway Board of Health has voted to lift the mask mandate as of Monday, February 28th. It is still recommended to wear a mask um, if one wishes to or if one is unvaccinated or has a compromised immune system. So that will be starting next week. And at some point, um, you know, if the select board, we still have until July 15th to be allowed to meet remotely. So it's certainly an option, but if the board wants to deliberate at some point about how, if you wish to go back in person and do, uh, um, as we were doing last summer, do the, the hybrid between both virtual and in person, um, July 15th, is that the date in Governor Baker's recent decree? Yes. And, and it may get extended more, we don't know, but. It could, it's, it, was, it was actually set for April and then it just recently got extended to July. Right. So uh -huh. yeah, yeah. Um, this week and last week, I'm having two more trainings on combi combis, which as you know, is the state portal for doing purchasing and um, putting out bids. So it's, um, I, I I haven't met anybody who has fun on combines. It's quite, <laughs> it's quite interesting to navigate. Um, I've certainly used it before. I used it back when it was Compass, but um, only for purchasing. So it's a sort of different bailiwick to learn how to put up bids. And then last but not least, Bruton Strange and I interviewed a candidate for the position of administrative assistant to the boards and committees. Um, we both thought she was wonderful. By the time I called her, she said, well, I already applied for a job and I'm going to take that one because it's during the day. So, um, so now we have to advertise again. Um, in Ashfield, um, I've been speaking with our town administrator and we both are looking for the same position. So we thought, and they're both very few hours and they're both in the evening. So we thought to try to make it more appealing um, to a candidate, we would advertise together. 
and it was clear that both positions were separate, but all the meetings are held on opposite nights, so it doesn't interfere. You know, somebody could actually work for both towns. So um, we'll give that a try and hopefully have more success with a, with a candidate in future. And that's all I got. I just wanted to say, I was in the room when she sat down to interview, I was signing documents in the back where we were interviewing her. And I saw her walk in and I saw her greet you. And I thought to myself, too good to be true, not gonna <laughs> work. <laughs> Which is just, I guess that's my current frame of mind, but, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, gosh. Sorry to hear that. I've thought that about the two people that had the job earlier. Uh, you're right. The two you're that right. come to mind, and and they were, were great. You're right. Actually, the the previous two people that had that position were really good at it. And um, yeah. <clears throat> um, I don't know if you wanted me. I I didn't put it in there. Um, because I believe you all know that we've already received it, but in the mail, we did, of course, get the, um, the Vertex um, application. So I didn't know if that was something that, yeah. I mean, that's not, it's up on the website too. So, but just to mention it for the, the tower. And so will they have, they'll have to have a board of appeals? Yes. Uh, and they're, hearing, talking, I... mm -hmm, they're talking about maybe having planning and ZBA do it together. Um, I'm not sure I haven't heard the, the last on that. So, but yes. Yeah, I believe there's a, there's a, um, a footage issue. So they have to go for a, a special permit. Yeah, I don't, I don't, um, I, I saw that when it came in, I thought that is a, that the road to Ashfield is a notorious cell phone drop zone. So, um, a cell tower or some improvement before Starlink is widely used by everybody, um, whatever. So, um, you know, I don't, I don't know. I, I do know from going up to Ashfield a lot, it is, Ashfield has terrible cell service and the Conway Ashfield's general region has terrible cell service. So it, I don't know, I don't know. Guess it's progress. Jan might know better than any of us, but will Starlink be providing cell service? I wanted to comment on that. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah. I'm so glad you mentioned me. So we have Starlink um, at our second home in Vermont, which is way up there in the Northern Kingdom, out of reach, and it works wonderful. And we've just ordered it for Conway, and we're really excited and haven't started yet. I mean, it's just been delivered, but we're very hopeful. I, but that's that's internet access, not internet access. but not cellular access. I mean, will will that will that let your cell phones work in places where they don't work today? Yeah. So only where you have um, like we do Wi-Fi calling on our phones. Yeah. Yeah. Really well. So if if that's what you use, you're you're good. But no, it's not cellular service yet. Right. So that was the bill you just implied, and I don't think that's. Well, I think that you know the, the whole. What, what I I remember when when he first started talking when Musk Elon Musk first started talking about that, he wanted to his whole thing was to help emergency services worldwide, and with with that voice over internet protocol phone thing whatever and right the, you know the, the whole in Vermont I don't know maybe about almost a year ago now. And um, it was limited sometimes. It would like turn in and out as the satellites pass by, but it's definitely improved. So they're adding satellites and we're in good shape there. So I'm, I'm thinking it's a promising product. If you got Roy on your side? Roy, I don't know. For the town. What's, what are we talking about? Can anybody <laughs> hear me? Can okay. you hear me? Yes. I can hear you, Joy. Yes. Okay. yes. I just joined, but I have a feeling it's something about Starlink. Yes. Yes. What about it? When are we when when is the whole world going to migrate to it? Jan is ordering it for her home in Conway. Yeah. Fine. I mean, it's it's not going to be better than uh, your Comcast. 
maybe a little cheaper, maybe. Yeah, so it's just as good. It's a hundred bucks a month. I'm gonna disengage from- you know, hold, it, hold it, hold it, a hundred bucks a month, but no TV part of that, right? No, so I was just internet. gonna say, um, no, good, we're gonna stream online and yeah. get the streaming product. Yeah, you know. Comcast. I'm glad uh, none of us are astronomers for a living. <laughs> because the damn satellite. <laughs> no, I'm serious. The satellites cause serious uh, interference. And it, they've addressed that. They're working on that. Yeah, I know. Uh, someday it'll be fixed. I said, I'm sorry. I'm just. Uh, I, <laughs> I'd like to say I'm a Luddite. Obviously, I'm not a Luddite. Those are, you know, meaning, I I, I do believe in technology, but uh, as somebody who has, ha I mean, it's just. And they've had outages, you know, this, this is, yeah, yeah. And I hope that my, the a plane that I'll someday, a flight I'll take sometime doesn't uh, run into a swarm of those things. You know, it's, it's just, it's more crap flying around the earth. That's, that's what it is. But look, there's a lot of places that don't have a wire and what are they supposed to do? You know, I understand that, but Jan here in Conway, we do have a wire. <laughs> Okay. 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 I'm sorry. I'm not, don't. Yeah. Did you leave? I'm not bothered by these things flying around in the orbit as I am by all the solar panels yeah. landing in our beautiful uh, fields. and. Well, they shouldn't necessarily yeah. be there. Yep. You know, so there you go. In waste places, you know, like um, where they have to be somewhere. There, yeah. there's. Okay. There was a heated. Well, we got two more minutes, Bob. <laughs> there, was a, there was a heated thread on the uh, next door thing. Uh, yeah. Bob, you, 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 is that still? Because honestly, I participated in another thread, something totally unrelated, and they yanked the thread. And I said nothing controversial. So this, this is. Uh, I'm surprised they've let that thread go as long as they have. Yeah, this is censorship in America. I guess. I guess. There you go. Yeah. But anyway, you can report back to us. Let us know how it's how it's doing. All right, sure will. And um, when is it? When are you scheduled to start it up? I, I don't know exactly. So we have the dish, and um, should be any time. Okay, very good. We'll see if it. We'll see how your VPN performs. <laughs> well, it's been performing in Vermont. I've been working from Vermont, and it's working just fine. Okay, good for you. Yep. <laughs> and, and and I got to tell you, out there, we're in the middle of nowhere, so there's there's no options. So this this right, is right. been an excellent option. And I, I get that. He yeah. started to serve the unserved, and it's working. I get it. I get it. How many of these little satellites we're supposed to have? Several hundred thousand by the time all is said and done. And that's I think he's talking four or five thousand, although you no, know it's more than that, Bob. Gonna go up. And more than that. Here's here's Alan right on time at six thirty. Yeah, right. Good timing. Yeah. So yep. that you have a quorum, Alan. We have a quorum. So I, I make a motion we be uh meet with the select board. Hey Alan. Good Hi, Roy. Hi, Rihanna. Good evening, everybody, I should say. <laughs> Jan, I didn't mean to make you feel bad. <laughs> feel bad? I don't think you felt bad at all. <laughs> all right, good. I was trying to be as diplomatic as I could about it. Yeah. Okay. No problem. So did you did you call did you call did, did I miss it did you call the finance committee yes order? yes I did okay then um we are ready to begin our six thirty weekly scheduled joint committee <laughs> meeting between with the select board and the finance committee to review um, three different budgets yes. department budgets so first I have um, one forty one and one forty two the assessor and. Yes, Lee is running a little late, so Jan was going to start us off tonight. Okay. So we're. Can everybody we're, see? Is that big enough? Can you make it any bigger? Ah, better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there. Can you hear me okay? 
Yes. Yep. Yeah, yes. There, there aren't any changes in my budget this year other than, um, well, to start with, I'm planning to plan for my retirement. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> what? I don't know exactly when that's going to be, but I think it's yes. nice to start adding a budget line for training. Mm -hmm. So if I were to go, I can train someone to take my place. So I've added that in this year for- Yeah, but if, not, if that means that if it's not in there, then you can't go. <laughs> no, it means if it's yeah. not in there, it leaves the town in a lurch and I don't want to do that. So- uh, Okay. Yeah. Uh, no, so I'm really hoping to add that into my budget this year. And, you know, I, I may not leave this year. I don't really have any immediate plans. I just think it's wise to, to add it in because um, in this type of position, there definitely needs to be some overlap in training. And, you know, if, if I were to leave, I need to spend some time with somebody to take over my spot. How'd you choose 1440? So what I did is I planned one month at twenty dollars an hour for eighteen hours a week. So that's that's how I came up with that number. And if, you know, I, I'm never going to leave the town in a lurch. I love this job. I love this town. So um, it's just it's just what I do. And I'm I'm just beginning to plan that I'm not going to be here forever. I vote for forever. <laughs> well, I have to get, have to get elected too. I yeah. That. So that's that's a difference in the salaries this year. Um, so that's the only difference. And then when you look into um, the other items, the the main thing I have is I'm starting to use a mailing service for my tax bills. So you kind of see the postage fade away from that and the software support come into it. But it's a very similar budget. Um, using this service actually saves us money. And if you consider that postage has gone up, you know, hourly wages have gone up, everything else has gone up. And um, so this, this helps us and spend our time in other places that we can use uh, our time more valuable, valuably. So uh, there's not really a big difference. Our software support always goes up. Um, is this uh, the same company we had changed to a couple of years ago, Jan, the uh, doing payroll? And yeah, so I had two big software changes. So uh, a couple of years ago, I changed to my tax collector software and that's going really well right now. And it's offered us a lot of extra little things that make our life easier. And we changed over our payroll system. Um, and you know that that was a little more expensive. We didn't have much option other than to do so. The old company was going out of business. And yeah, I don't know what else to say. So our tax collector software was free for three years and we're just starting to pay for it this year. So All right. thank you. Yeah. Roy and Rihanna, have you any questions? Well, so um, I'm just, I want to make sure I'm getting this correct. So FY 2021 expended 77.085. We're in uh, 2022. We don't know what that's going to be. Right. But the, but the budget, how come it only shows seven? I, I don't, what am I missing here? Oh, so I'm, the, budget, I'm sorry. the budget shows about a $4,000 increase. Almost four thousand. Like yeah, there's a. Uh, yeah, I think Roy's pointing out the total. Think out, Roy, you think there's a mistake or? Yes. Yeah, I'm looking at that now. I didn't realize. You're that, in the totals. Yeah, these are not yeah. adding up properly down here. Yeah. I don't know what happened to it, but yeah, mm -hmm. in the budget category for each year, not the not the expended, the budget yeah. category for each year. It didn't okay. grand total. That's all. Right, right. I don't know what happened to it. Sorry. It just, it just reprinted the line above instead of adding them yeah. all. Yep. I, I can good. fix that. If you want to share my screen, I think I have the correct amounts. 
Yeah, I think that's the one. Let me look because I thought that was the one that was sent. Just copy the formula. And, uh, you know, from. Um, you know. If you want to share it, Jan, go ahead. Okay. Big It says it's disabled. Oh, sorry. Okay, you should be able to do it now. Uh, so can oh. you see me now? Sorry. Can you see my screen now? I can't see it. Can anybody else? Yes. I can see it, but it has the same mistake. Yeah, it does. So what, where's that mistake? Let me fix it. Oh, the grand total on the bottom, Jan. That would be... Uh, I can go uh, through it. 919 doesn't, uh, doesn't grand total. 85318 is what I'm sharing now. No, no, yeah. the grand total for each of the previous years each of the, in the, the previous category. 18, 19, 20 through 22, Jan. Uh, the the line 19 should have a grand total, it does. The green ones. The total, the total just reprints the subtotal. Yep. It, add, it adds, I think, uh, lines 11 through 17, not 5 through... Oh, so I three I see Kate. Jan, your salary is not carrying down. Right. That's another way. Your yeah. subtotaling aligns eleven through sixteen as opposed to six through sixteen. That's all. Not not a, a quick change. Jan, I think what happened is when the line got taken out, it just altered the formula. So I can go in and fix that. It's not a problem. Okay. It'll yeah. So up. we we had initially. We had an extra line in there for an educational incentive, and um, it turned out that it wasn't available for the assistant treasurer collector this year. So I decided to delete the whole thing and go for that another year. Oh, in Veronique's budget, she had 40 for the collector and 23 for the assistant. And they added to the same 63 as last year. All right, so I have it correct on mine. I'm not sure if I'm sharing my screen right. Yeah, no, it's there. There you go. Yeah. 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 Sorry, does somebody have a, a phone on? I hear something in the background. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, so the, the only the only difference in the um, in the salary item from twenty from last year to this year is the fourteen forty. Yes. And then, and then. Well, uh, in addition to that, so we used depending, to have. Depending on what the town does across the board for everybody. Yeah. So yeah. a couple years back, we were asked to combine the assistant treasurer and the, and the treasure collector into one line item. And nobody else did that. But, um, so I've split it back out this year because I think um, it offers more transparency to you know, the treasure collector and the assistant treasure collector. So that can be seen now split out. I have no further questions. I'm good. No further questions. How about Rihanna? Have you any yeah. further questions? No, I don't count. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Thank you. So, but basically, your your basically, Jan, your entire increase is that fourteen forty for training, a little bit for postage, and a little bit for, I don't know, the screen just went kablooey, but it was. Yep, and a little and a little bit for software. 
Buffer yeah. you can always they're going to go up three to five percent, and they and each of them have. <laughs> yep. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. Um, you want to um, you didn't change the other ones, right, Jan? Do you want me to call up the omnibus again? Sure. Yeah, I didn't change it. Okay. So if you stop sharing and then I can. All right, let's see. How do I do that? Just close the window. There should be someone up at the top that says um, stop share, like a red button. Yep. There you go. Perfect. These, these are all the things we're going to miss from our pandemic past. <laughs> okay. <laughs> It was fun sitting around that circle. <laughs> it was a right, so that was nice. Now I can move on to my um, employee benefits part, if that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. Um, let's you have see. the floor. Yeah, is, oh, does, does oh, okay. I okay. You're gonna do it on yours. All right. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> does that show you my employee benefits? Yep. Okay, excellent. <laughs> mm. So um, retirement, uh, the first line on this item is um, it's our FERCOG assessment that we are bound to contribute. So it's, um, it's helping making them solid, sort of like we have our OPEB contributions to make our retirement benefits solid. Well, so does the retirement uh, need to make themselves uh, in place. So each town of the Franklin County Retirement Board has to contribute this amount, and that's the amount we're assessed based on our salaries we provided, and it's sort of indisputable. Uh, unemployment, I calculate based on our current rate, which is super low. Um, we're at 0.1%, despite all of the fraudulent surveys we had this year, which was a battle during COVID. Um, so many fraudulent claims and one after another, but luckily our rate did not go up. So this amount is based on our uh, gross salaries. I take a percentage of our gross salaries and go from there. So it's, it's down, I guess, just a little bit. And maybe our gross salaries are as well. Um, you know, we've had a few position cuts and everyone tries to make do during <coughs> things have cut just a little bit. I think that, I think that line item might've gone down just because we had open positions for too long, for, for a while. We had yeah. money allocated to open positions that were not filled. Yeah, it's a moving target, you know, in the school we have open positions, in the town we have open positions, so it's, uh, what I, I take last year's gross salaries and I multiply it out and I plan for a, an increase just in case there is one and then do what we can do. Yeah, so usually I'm in a little over budget on this one, I mean under budget, you know, so I plan for more than we get, but I feel like I need to. Um, so group health insurance this year, our rate did not go up. It remained the same, which is really a nice thing. Our group remains very solid in that um, our claims are reasonable and we have a good amount of money behind us. They, you know, they, they keep a, a balance in that account to cover it uh, in case we have increased expenses and we're good and so rates did not go up. So uh, that was helpful. So each year what I do is I, I look at the January insurance enrollment. And at that time, I feel like we have the most employees, you know, the ads come in when the, the September teachers come in or July 1st enrollments come. So January is a pretty good measurement of it. So I take January's measurement and I add on a family plan, an individual plan and a retiree plan, just because you never know who's coming down the road. And, and that's how I figure out our group insurance rate. So we are just down by a couple thousand this year, not, not really much. Um, 
you know, if we if we kept the same enrollees, we'd be the same rate. So just keep our fingers crossed there. Group insurance has been pretty stable. Um, we generally come in around 1700. So 1900 is a pretty fair assessment. Medicare, again, I take the, um, the expected gross salaries and multiply it out by 0.0145, the Medicare rate. And you know, we're slightly down. So our, our total gross salary payment is just a little bit down. And that's it. So um, we're slightly up due to salary increases, I guess. Um, nothing, nothing major to report in this budget this year. Jan, would, would this be where the, if there was an OPEB contribution, would this be where it would be found? No. In the, the budget? Uh, no, it, it's not. So OPEB is generally done as a, an, an article raised from free cash or what other sources we have, but we don't usually put OPEB within the budget. And was there a recommendation on that from the auditor at any time recently? No. So that means we don't have to put, we don't have to have an OPEB warrant article? Well, so they continue to recommend to address it. Um, if you look, there, there was a recent report released, and I think I shared it with uh, Veronique, uh, all the other towns and what they're contributing to OPEB and we're kind of in line with what other towns are doing. Nobody's taking it super seriously. They're they're starting to plan on it because they they know it affects uh, their borrowing capacity. So it's added in as an, a, an additional um, item. You know when you when you can borrow. So uh, I I don't really know what to recommend for that. It's I think what we've been doing in the past is, is we've been putting in 20, 25,000 in an extra article to put towards the account. It kind of lets borrowers know that we're, we're thinking about it. We're um, looking at our balance. We're assessing it appropriately. And right now there's no immediate need to fund it totally because that's about impossible. Right. So I mean, just you know, because front frontiers OPEB obligation is what three or, or retirement obligation is what three or four times ours or. Oh yeah, and, for sure. And, yep. Yeah, and and, and that um, this will be year five without uh, year five in a row with no OPEB contribution, and I specifically asked the auditor, and said not this year. You don't have to this year, for Frontier. Really, that's surprising. Yeah. Jan, te technically, uh, how is that? Uh, how are those funds segregated? Is it like a stabilization account, something like that? Uh, I'm not sure what you're asking. The OPEB. You ask the, the, the OPEB is it going? It goes into a fund. How is that? How is that yeah. accounted for? So the you separate fund. Our, you want to know our OPEB balance? Is that what you're asking? Yes. Uh, well. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. what you're asking. It goes into a fund, way, right? So it's kept in a separate account. Right, but it's not stabilization account. You need two thirds, right? No. But, so this this here is, uh, I mean, how how does the town access that money? Or so you mean the town can access the OPEB money by town meeting vote? Is that what you mean? I guess. Yeah. Yeah. So there's no, <laughs> in my opinion, there's no real need to access that money right now. We're trying to build it up. So in the right. past. Right. We've, we've let, uh, maybe two years ago, I think it was, Tom proposed an article that we that we take from that budget and we fund the retirees um, health insurance that way. And unfortunately, he didn't take it out of the, of the health insurance budget. So it was sort of double funded. So we never used it and we turned it, we returned it back to the OPEB fund. We never, we didn't take it. Right, but in theory, let's say so, 10, 10 years from now, I'm sorry. So some of that OPEB money could conceivably be used to uh, fund some of the, you know, the- um, It could, the, but right now we're in such good standing that it doesn't hurt us to fund health insurance costs. 
And, you know, generally our retiree costs are about 35,000 out of the, what, 220 some odd thousand health insurance. So it's a small amount and we've, we've been able to sustain that. And I think we should continue to do so. No, I, I'm not advocating anything other than that. I'm just wondering if and when the time comes, how easy or difficult is it to access those funds? It's town meeting vote. Okay. Simple yeah. majority? Yes. Uh, it might be two thirds. I'm not sure what it is, but okay. it's okay. generally two thirds for that kind of an account. So I would assume it okay. is. Okay. Well, that's what I thought. Similar, similar stabilization. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Well, so can good. you all see the screen? Did, did I call back up the 145? Yeah. Okay. I just wanted to show you, it was just a quick fix here in that line. So everything should be all set now for. Thank you. It was just a formula. Yeah. So Jan, did you want to go on to um, the seven, the debts? Well, yeah, I have a question, Janice, on the, on the uh, group health insurance. Just one more. So we have six people who are retiring this year. I know a couple of years ago we got caught because a couple of people went on the plan, that uh, health insurance plan, who were new hires. That was unanticipated. I think we had to raise an additional, as I recall, ten or twenty thousand. And uh, so my question is: are, are, I mean, we have six new people we're going to have to hire. Maybe we've already hired them. Are you factoring that in at all? And if so, how? Yeah, no. So I haven't. Um... And I know what you're talking about. When COVID hit, we had an unprecedented amount of retirees and, yeah. and we didn't necessarily hire all the replacements, but so we had a drop in that and then we have an increase and it's, it's super hard to plan for. Um, you may say we have six new retirees this year, but I don't really know what you're speaking of because I only know of two. And I think most of those retirees happened last year. But yeah, it, and that's, that's when our budget was hit. And um, so not only do we add new retirees, you know, which takes them off of the active payroll, but then you have to replace them so you have more active employees. So that, that's what causes that fluctuation. But I think that I think that happened last year. It's it's not necessarily going to happen this year. This year that we're doing. You're actually both right. You're actually both right. You have to buy out, have to buy out sick days, right, Phil? That's so right. Yeah. So we're doing, yeah. we're doing the payouts of those employees that that we heard the health insurance differences on last year. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. So they, they, they had some uh, contractual uh, notice provisions. They had to provide notice for that sick, for certain benefits. And so some of them didn't make that notice for certain retirement benefits like the sick pay buyback. So, um, so that, that came onto this year's budget for that purpose, but they actually did retire last year. And so their health insurance, Jan's exactly right. The health insurance thing would have gone through last year. Went through last right, Thank you, Phil. Thank you, Jan. Yeah. I have no further questions. Where are we on? Are you, have you any questions of Jane? No, Alan, no, I don't have a question. I'm fine. Thank you. All right, thank you, Roy. Thank you, Yana. All right, onward. All right, so next I can discuss debt. Um, Veronique, if you can release the screen share, I can go to my debt or screen share yours, either one. I was already sharing it. Can you not see it? Oh. Uh, is, it is it not up? You have a screensaver right now. But yeah. Good looking tanager there. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Oh, that's because Jan went into it instead of, <laughs> that's why. All right. Now, can you see it? Yep. Yeah. Okay, good. I'm going to make sure it matches what I have. And it doesn't. <laughs> Did you change that one too? Well, yeah, because um, I had oh, okay. All right. <laughs> you didn't give it to me. So, I'll, okay, I will let you share then. No, so I did. I did. Um, this one is the difference was because we take part of this money from free cash. So, Jen, could you share so we can see? Yeah. Work on it here. 
that it? Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. So you should see debt for 71,352. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, the reason for the change in this year, well, first of all, I should start by saying we paid off the fire truck. So there's no more money requested for the fire truck. That deserves a party. Yeah, <laughs> it does. So it's a five-year note, we're done, and the fire truck's paid for. Woo -hoo. So uh, the highway garage, we started uh, the note last year, and the select board had voted to fund part of this in, from free cash. So I initially had the full 66000 in uh, principle here, but I changed it because we had recommended that 13867 come from free cash. So that comes from a special article to be raised from free cash and it lowers the budget amount to 52133. Uh, the interest is to be paid out of this budget for uh, 71252. That's note plus interest. Okay, you're right. Something's wrong here. Mm. Uh, let me pull up my interest amount. Should be nineteen one nineteen. Yeah, 19,119 is the interest. And 7,172 is the total. Right? Yep. So that's 71,252 is the total plus 13,867 interest. Does that make sense? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just one small, it's just one small slice of our debt, though, right? It's just, this is just. Not really. This is, this I mean, is debt. It, well, does, it doesn't include the frontier debt obligations. Correct. And it doesn't, it doesn't include, like, say, the request that's going to be on the warrant for, um, to begin saving 100000 a year for the new fire truck for this year. Correct. That's not debt. Right. Well. It isn't, but that's so that we don't go into debt. So, yeah. right. Um, right. Re re refresh my uh, my memory. Did we? So we did not finance any road construction last year. Is that correct? So we we actually approved an article for three hundred. That's what I thought. 30, Thirty thousand, I believe, for bridge repair. That's outstanding debt. So we can borrow, but we haven't. And the reason is um, initially the state wasn't gonna fund this bridge repair. And then they said, well, maybe we will. Right. You know, it's kind of pending. So this bridge repair is on hold, but we have voted. We have 300 and I think it's, I think it's 330 or 300 um, in approved debt that we haven't taken yet. So I could go borrow that money, but I haven't because we don't have a project in mind. But didn't we have a, um, we had a whole discussion about, you know, how to deal with the roads. Um, and somebody, Alan, do you remember? <laughs> it was, that was the first Yeah, it was time. the uh, Capital Improvements Committee. And I forget the woman's name who was on there had uh, suggested a whole paving plan that she was going to work out with with Ron Sweet. Okay, so but we didn't we didn't act on it. Is that correct? Correct. Correct. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we were going to pave about a mile stretch of Shelburne Falls Road. Right. With borrowed money. Well, the idea was to get us in the habit of borrowing money to pave roads so we could kind of gain on them faster than they disintegrate. But <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I'm pretty sure this money was borrowed uh, with the language of bridge repair in it. So I don't think you can use it for many other um, right. purposes. So you're limited there. It is something I try, we try to pay attention on. And there is still a good chance that the state is going to pay for that bridge. So, yeah. or some of it. So. Yeah. 
So we haven't borrowed yet. Um, so um, just to keep going, uh, interest payments, I funded a small amount here for um, when people get a refund on their taxes, they are allowed to collect some uh, an 8% interest. And so this year we've had a, a claim for that and I've needed to come up with some money to fund it. <laughs> <laughs> so um, that's what we added that line item in for. But that's it for debt. Thank you. I have no further questions. Roy, Rihanna, have you? I don't know. I'm fine. No, I'm fine. I guess I'm noticing that in 2022, the, the total budget was more than 100. Now we are almost 30,000 lower. And that's because the fire truck note is paid for. Okay, yeah. We don't have to pay for that this year. It's done. Yeah. Okay. But as Phil noted, you know, we do have some outstanding debt in the school department. So it falls in a different budget line. Um, and it's indirectly our debt. It's Frontier's debt, but we're assessed for it. So, you know, it doesn't it doesn't go on our town debt report, but it's it's part of us regardless. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Jan. Sure. Thanks for trading places, Jam. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. So, um, do we need Jan for anything else? You're welcome to stay, of course. But yep, I'll hang on for a minute. All right, cool. Yeah, and thank you, Jan. I did find your email. Sorry about that. I don't know how I missed that. No problem. So, let's get to. So, yeah. with ready for the assessor, uh, uh, Lee, Lee come on. I'm here. Lee Wickham on the hot seat. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Actually, I'm sitting on a futon and the cape. <laughs> the cape. <laughs> that sounds even Lucky better. You. Is it cool. raining down there? It was. It isn't right at the moment. It's supposed to be nice tomorrow. I'm hoping for the kids. They want to see a beach. <laughs> <laughs> we just got here about 6 15. Oh, over here. Is my um, screen sharing okay? Can everybody see Looks that? Great, yeah. yeah. Okay, yes. good. Yep. good. Yep, okay. Um, to start off with one of the most important things that we did this year, at Veronique's suggestion, I agree with it completely, it was up line seven through nine, or six through nine, actually. We split up the salary components so that we could more easily track them. Can so I make stipends, a note on those? I'm sorry, Lee, your numbers for the salaries shouldn't be yep. 5,400. She's got them in there as 5,400. And they should be, they should all, yeah, they should all be 5,100. Oh, yes, 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 yes. Oh, right, got it. Yeah, oh, no, that was fast. And I don't know if they should all be 110. No, oh, probably yeah. not, but Jen no, and I have yeah. recommendations for changing those codes. So right. we'll, we'll get to those later. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Okay, I'll and, shut up. Um, as I say, the purpose was to track things more easily. The stipends, of course, are, are the, not an honorarium, but, you know, essentially a, a small amount paid to the assessors, the elected assessors, the three elected assessors at $1,600 each in recognition of their uh, meeting time, the time they spend going out on new growth, Another time they you know spend for which they are not paid an hourly wage, so that's what that is. Um, I don't understand the expenditures in twenty one at all. Forty one thousand, I think that's a mix up in categories, but that's all right. Well, we're looking at forty eight hundred again. That's what we've had for several years. We did not budget forty nine twenty and twenty two. We budgeted forty eight hundred. Oh, in twenty two. Yes, uh, so M7, M6, yep, Okay. So, yes, yep. let me, I'll double check the accountant. Um, yep, that was M6, uh -huh. that should be 4,800. And as we go down, what we've done is, whoops, can you, 
Okay, the administrative assessor is essentially my position, which is an appointed position, separate from being on the board, and it involves, you know, all the office and clerical work, as well as site visits and uh, education programs, whatever might come. And that we changed, we broke it out in 37.424, which is the requested amount in uh, cell zero, uh, 07, is calculated from 30 hours a week at my current rate of 23.99 for 52 weeks. Um, included in that is probably at least 10 hours a week is about what we've been doing in training. Laurie has come in as our, uh, came in September 1st as our new clerk, replacing Laura Hutt. And she has done beautifully. She's picked up things easily and well. And as we go through the year, so many things happen only once, once a year or every couple of years, whatever. Um, she's learning them as well. It'll be two or three cycles, two cycles at least, I think, before she's really comfortable with everything. But it's, it's great. It really is. The clerical $14,040 is, let me see, for the clerk's position, the assessor's clerk, which is essentially has been sort of the clerical position for the person who gets the mail, processes the mail, takes care of phone calls, general actions with the public, prepares all the mailings, receives all the mailings, um, prepares materials for the meeting, that type of thing. Now, we would like to push that up to $18 an hour because of the excellent work that's being done and at 15 hours a week, now this is a reduction in the number of hours a week, raising the rate to $18 for 52 weeks comes out to $14,040. Laurie's been able to do the same work in less time, which is a terrific advantage in our office. Um, and then the third figure is 2398, which is set aside for um, site visits, anything like that. If an assessor, an elected board assessor has to go out and do standard site, site visits like um, cyclical reinspections, that type of thing, or um, new photographs, anything like that, they would be paid at $15 an hour. And uh, no, sorry, uh, we had it at $14.25. And we estimated six hours a week, which is probably high but it seemed like a, a reasonable figure to start with. So that um, 2470 may be a little high, but it should be included. As we go down further, mileage, line 11, is a Can new Can I back up a minute? Can yep. we look at that section alone. Yeah, so the administrative assessor line, the one, yep. it seems it should be just your salary. Sorry, coming from a payroll perspective, um, yeah, it is. This number should match your exact annual salary. That's how we estimated it. Okay, you just mentioned yes. hourly rate, but um, right. Well, what what I what we did was estimate you know upcoming amounts, and so uh, I figured it at my present rate, leaving room for the town to do whatever the town might do, as far as across the board raises were uh, concerned. So we estimated that 37,424 from 30 hours a week at my present 23.99 for 52 weeks. So I don't remember what your last year's annual salary was, but this should be exactly equal to your last year's annual salary. And then if there's an increase, that would be added on there from. That's right. It is the same as my okay. Last All year. right, just just checking. Lee, yeah. is your pay changing from hourly to salary? No, I am on salary, but this is how it breaks out. Okay. I think the confusion might be that the way you've broken it out, uh, Lee, my, uh, that's probably a reasonable difference. Yeah, I think it's the it's just showing the numbers in a different format. Um, just so you're aware, this number here 
is was a re revised budget for that year. That's I take these straight from the accountant's sheets, and I took this one from the okay, accountant. Okay, that was our well. conversion year. That that's right. Yeah. And then this seconds, and it shouldn't have. Yeah, and I don't know why why this one yeah. is four forty nine twenty instead of forty eight hundred. Yeah. I don't know, but that's what's on the sheet, so that's what I wrote down. But right. but yeah, so this we're just trying to break it out now for more clarity going forward. That's right. So what last year? Um, look under M7 was 56,591 is requested to be these three figure figures put together, which comes to about 54 or something. I don't have the, the figure for the 37,424 plus 14 plus two. Uh, it ends up being several thousand less than last year, largely because Laurie can do the same amount of work in fewer hours which is why I believe that she does deserve the $18 an hour. So and can, can I, can I ask about that? Because there was sort of, there, there is sort of a, a, I don't know, a process, I guess, for requesting a, um, mm -hmm. a raise for an employee in the department, but this really kind of isn't, I don't think it like, um, we filled just, out a sheet. All right. I didn't see the payroll re re increase sheet. So, so then, so how, Veronique, how does this, because the, for, for the, um, for Lori, this is sort, sort of like one of three positions. So how, how and, and there was like an interplay between the, whatever, the salary, the, the compensation for all three of them. So how, what, what does this make the total of everything? And what, what is, I mean, see, it's like a separate decision. Well, there are three separate positions. So yes, and Lori is doing an amazing job at doing all three of them. Um, part of, I think, and Lori can speak to this, but part of the challenge is her finding out how many hours are actually required for each of the positions, not the clerk, because that's separate, but for the other two that she's working on. So and this is making sure that I do not work over time. Over, over 40. So this right. is kind of a learning curve. I think we're still trying to figure out exactly how that will all play out. Um, all I can say is that she's doing an amazing job at everything. <laughs> so, um, and, you know, 18 is certainly not um, anywhere out of the ballpark for that position. In fact, it's low, but. Um, and Phil, if it sets your mind at ease, I probably won't come near that 14,000 because that's set at 15 hours a week, every week. And I won't be able to work 15 hours a week, every week, because I do have to take some of that time away from that to do work for the board of health. So <laughs> what, what, what is it? What is it currently? If, what, what is it currently? If it was going up to 18, what is it currently? 1750. Yeah. 1750. So, yeah, so it's going it, up. It's going up fifty cents. So what? What would it be with seventeen fifty plus two percent, or two and a half percent, or three percent? I do not know. Well, and but don't forget, Phil. The part of the issue is that um, the the number of hours for this position were more before, right? Am I correct in that? Yes. 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 So, so we had nine. That, we previously had nineteen hours of, a week. Right. With Laura Hutt. Mm -hmm. So if you look at the pot of money to get a position, to get the job done. Um, Lori's getting it done in less time and still not making the pot of money that was there, if I'm saying that correctly. So, yeah. That's primarily where our savings of $3,000 comes in, is, is, is raised for the overall clerical we, salaries. You, we save $3,000 by giving a raise. Yes. 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 <laughs> yes. Isn't it a wonderful thing? She's that good. The efficiency here is unbelievable. And I yes, because I'm actually doing it. I'm you're giving me the $18, but I'm doing the job really in probably 10 to 12 hours a week compared to Laura's 19 to 20 hours a week. Right. That I believe. Um, <laughs> the efficiency is unbelievable. We're very happy about it. If I could though bring you back to the 110 line of 37424. Yeah. I hate to beat this up, but I have your salaries being thirty-seven five sixty-five ten. Oh, oh, gee. I really, I really need to follow the numbers here because okay. 
if we're over by a hundred dollars, a hundred dollars is a lot of money, and we have to raise an appropriate next year. Oh, there we go. You just so missed that one. I have, yeah. So that's what I have uh, in ten cents. So yeah. So anyway, sorry. Good, good. Well, Veronique, just number that. number stickler here. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. You should be. You should be, Jay. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Any more questions on the salaries at the moment? Or shall I move it down? Okay. Um, um, wait, wait. I, so, <laughs> one more question. Um, I thought you, uh, as I did, were putting in some figures to train for your retirement. Yes. It's included in, in that 37. How can that be? That's your salary number. That's what I do per I figured I could turn a train within my 30 hour within my salary range. Yeah, but we we have to pay someone else. That's, yeah, that's, that's me. That's Laurie right that's now. That's me. Okay. She's moving. She's so moving. If, that's, if that's covered in your Laurie, Laurie salary, that's mm -hmm. yes. It's covered in both of ours. Okay. Not yours. Yep. Yours is your salary, period. Yeah. The 37 is my salary. Yeah. But I'm devoting some of that time to training. And I'm devoting some of my time to learning. Okay. okay. <laughs> nice. Okay. Okay. All right. So, um, Line 11, mileage, is a new category split out. We had previously had it kind of lumped together in the, the um, salaries where we were doing, you know, salaries, mileage, and so forth. But mileage doesn't really belong there. It covers the um, mileage for when we go out on new growth and abatement site visits. Uh, we can do anywhere from 15 to 40 miles in a day. And so whoever is driving is compensated for that at the going rate. Currently somewhere around 58 cents, I think. Not too sure about it. Um, Russell's driven a couple of times. Lori's driven once. Uh, Malcolm's driven a couple of times, whoever. And so we keep tra track of that. And at the end of the year, we submit for that to be added to their stipend check. Um, that $75 should be pretty, pretty reasonable. Yep. Next line down, tax map maintenance is um, simply annual updates for our tax maps from CAI Technologies up in uh, New Hampshire, with whom we've worked for many years. And I increased it a little bit more because they have gone up to $1,900 plus an additional hundred because they charge us $15 for every house that they draw onto the maps, house or outbuilding. So with the 1900, I still have a hundred dollars left to put in a half dozen new structures on our map. The GIS website maintenance is a separate issue. That's our, as you know, the website of uh, the $2,700 is let me see here, hang on a sec. That's my estimate. I wasn't able to get a new figure from them yet, but we've been going at $2,400. And so I thought I'd ought to better request a little bit more. I also don't know if the fee for membership in ESRI, which is the GIS programming, is going to change at all. The fee for this year has stayed at $400. So we should be okay, just fine with 2,700. That may be a couple of one or 200 high, but it would cover everything we have. The next one, deeds and plans. Oh, that one just goes crazy. Uh, <laughs> $25 and usually we spend about five of it. So we like that one. Um, and that's what they bill us at the end of the year for the surveys that they've sent us during the year. We no longer have to pay for the deeds themselves. We can get them free on uh, electronically. Postage, 
we've had to increase up to over a thousand last year, as you can see, because of our many mailings. We had had a backlog of stamps and postage that had been paid for in prior years, but now we're back to year to year. So 1100, uh, we have a mailing of about 30 forms in January. And then in August, the chapter forms go out. That's actually about 175. And then we may send out uh, forms during the abatement period, plus you know the standard regular office communication. So based on what we have in the drawer for stamps, 1100 should cover us well. Dues and subscriptions to professional groups like the Franklin County Assessors Association and the State Assessors Associations are covered by the 250. You see last year we budgeted 300 and we had 30 left. So 250 should be good there. Uh, the State Association is especially good at keeping towns notified about what is going on at the state government level, new legislation that's coming through, um, actions at the appellate tax board, anything like that, very valuable information. And now tuitions and meetings, that's been low because of COVID, but we would like to go to the training program. Uh, we'd like to go to the one in September if they hold it in person. And there are several now that they're offering online that we could probably attend. They're generally a very moderate fee, if anything. They're offered by the Department of Revenue and um, occasionally one from a private group um, of interest. Office supplies stays right around 1400 usually we had asked for, but we brought it down to a thousand. We don't need a whole lot. We just bought toner and so forth. We were able to replace some of that in our revaluation, of course, budget, and which is now closed until next time. Um, and so we think that a thousand will be fine there. Our equipment repair of 750 is, um, we earmark 535 every year as the fee for annual maintenance on our big copier printer. And other than that, it's a small allowance. Um, my color printer is getting pretty old, although it's holding up well, but I'd like to keep in mind that we might need something there. So the 750, gives us $215 extra more than I know we would absolutely need. Uh, evaluation software support. That is our calculation program from Tyler Technologies. And that is staying for one more year at $37.75. And there is no fee now from the CSC from our old valuation program. You notice that last year's was $40,088. That was because it was $37.75 to Tyler, plus $355, something like that, to our old program for continued support. That support's now ended, so we're at $37.75 for this year at least. So our total expenses uh, category comes in at $11,925 compared to $12,000 last year. Mm. Um, about $75. $85 difference, a bit lower again. We're doing okay. <laughs> um, I did put in, I did look at our expended, uh, fiscal 22 expended. Right at the moment, we are have expended $49,500. So we're just about we're exactly where we should be for two thirds of the way through the year, or not quite two thirds. Uh, nothing is overextended except our dues and subscriptions. We've paid out 278 for that so far this year. But everything else is in very good order and definitely in the black. So our requested total at the bottom of the column there comes out at 70,728, uh, down almost 3,000 from last year. Questions? Have you solved the, the your storage problem, uh, shortage issues, or um, was that, that what? Was that, for, you know, that last year that that was a, a thing? Yeah, oh, you mean, yes, space in the vault and so forth? Right, yes. Yes, yes, I believe we have. Uh, we went through, we, we were 
going to transition over to digital storage. But we did go through, we had many binders of old data that was no longer needed to be kept. And so they were emptied and shredded. Uh, for example, the commitment books. Jan is obliged by law to keep them. We aren't. So if we have an electronic copy, that certainly is sufficient for us. We don't need a three inch binder full and taking up space in the vault. So we were able to lose about 10 of those and other uh, data that was outdated. For example, if someone applies for exemption and they've been applying every year you know, for 12 years, we don't need to keep beyond the last three or four years. So the prior years were taken out shredded. This is all according to the uh, law as directed by the Massachusetts archives. And so it was all done according to their directions and um, calendars. So that loosened up a lot of space. Good. Yep, we're very Good. happy about it. Good, that's saved the town some money too, thanks. Oh, you betcha. <laughs> yep. Lee, it's Roy. <clears throat> um, my, my, uh, don't skimp on the uh, tuition meetings. You know, if you need some more money, put some more money in there. Lee? I was just, oh. I was just going to say how nice a three thousand dollars decrease from last year sounds. <laughs> well, yeah, but I don't, like you it. know, but some of these those meetings, I'm sure, are quite useful and might save us, might save the town you know, might pay for themselves. How's that? So I should go back up to the 400, maybe. Well, the $3,000 decrease is all in salary. So, you know. Right. True. True. And, and if I went back up, added 150 back in there, and took it back up to 400. Uh, as you see, back in 2018, we paid 406 for that line. In 2019, it was 460 and so forth before COVID hit. So maybe we should stay at 400. Um, I know everyone is saying they want to get back to in-person meetings because the DOR representatives feel they get so much out of it too. And the opportunity for them to interact at coffee right. time or whatever with the town uh, representatives is, is invaluable. Right. You can um, just talk yourself into it. That's good. I have another no. I have, I have question or an issue with it. I think it's a good idea. I think trainings are really important. We do too. And this way we both could go. Laurie Good. and I both could go to these things, maybe. Good. Yep. Anything else? Uh, well, separately, uh, in terms of new growth, will you have any figures for us between now and you think uh, mid April? Um, let's see, Veronique, I told you $38,000, didn't I, in revenue? I believe so was what we were estimating right. so far. Okay. And we've not seen anything to substantially increase that. Now the utilities, Eversource has been a fantastic source of new growth as they replace and repair the high line, the high tension lines. But we haven't seen their form back yet. They don't have to report until March 1st and they usually wait until the last minute. So I won't know what we might be getting from them until then. Um, they're kind of my hope and holdout for this year for any large amount. There's very little building going on as you, as you can tell. I mean, the price of materials right now is so sky high that no one is building if they can help it. They're waiting or holding off, uh, even if it's finishing work. Yeah. Thank you, thank you. Lee. So I'm afraid it's gonna be a, a, a modest year there. Yeah. I do feel that we'll be able to, re to release some funds from the overlay reserve. Um, we started the year with $65,549 and we've, we will have returned about 20,500. So that leaves just about 40,000 in reserve. And I think we can release plenty of that easily without um, putting the fund into any kind of sketchy stage. And that 20,000 can be released to uh, be used for any lawful purpose at town meeting. 
So that might be helpful. Um, that's always, get at, go ahead. That's always helpful. Yes, it's definitely helpful. <laughs> you bet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You can ask me to speak to revenues a little bit tonight, if you don't mind. Yeah. Um, I was looking over pages two and three of the tax recap, which is there on the gateway program at uh, the Department of Revenue. And page three is all local receipts that are estimated to come from uh, sources other than taxes. And it includes things like state aid, it includes uh, motor vehicle excise, it includes fees and fines and interest on accounts, things like that. Looking at just motor vehicles, the accountant is usually directed on all of these to estimate very modestly so that there are no, it, it, you get at least the amount you had estimated as actual revenue. Revenue of above and beyond that is great. It goes into free cash at the end of the year, probably. Motor vehicle excise over the past three years has averaged $241,960. Um, Mike usually estimates about 190. So that's reasonable. I had sort of hoped to get him up to 220 or so, but he feels that he really needs to do, be very, very careful with that. The other revenues, <clears throat> excuse me, uh, let's see, the cherry sheet revenues, the estimated receipts looking at the past four years have averaged 1.1 1 .1 million, 109,741. And so right now we are at the stage two of the governor's um, estimated preliminary. It still has three more steps to go through the House, the Senate, and the final committee determination. And so a figure of 1109 is a little hopeful. In 19, we had 1.1. 1. 1 one no, one million hundred twenty thousand twenty. We were high at one million one hundred fifteen thousand. Both those years were high and nice. Twenty one, um, and then we got down to one one hundred one. So I think probably one thousand one million one hundred thousand one million hundred ten thousand is probably. Um, going to be in the ballpark for what we expect for state receipts. And the, let's see, the estimated charges have averaged out to 244,428 for state charges. Okay. Um, Excuse me. Which is, again, probably what we'll have to pay roughly to the state. Uh, our tornado deficit is gone. You don't need to worry about that. The education, actually, the education line, Chapter 70 line, right at the moment is up 440,000 for what the state is determining to give us. I like the way that's going. School choice is up 60,000 in total education, up so 500,000. So that looks nice. Um, we'll just have to wait. One thing we had, we, when I was looking at um, the total local receipts, the total for the whole page, the past three years, each year had quite a significant amount from miscellaneous and non recurring income. This comes from things like selling real estate that has been uh, acquired by tax takings. So when we sell that, the money has to go into miscellaneous and non or be reported miscellaneous and non-recurring because we have no expectation of that happening again. So when I looked at those figures, I took out what was the miscellaneous and non-recurring for each year. And the total averaged out for the three years from, for local receipts to 319,563 or 320,000 actual local receipts. So I think you can use that figure in estimating with some reliability. 
um, any other questions? Well, I'll just add in, since you mentioned the chapter 70 and you yep. spoke with, with you, you, you spoke with approval to the 300 or 400,000 that we're gonna, that the increase, but just so that people know that we're, the, the state, you know, we're, we're in the middle of this, the state borrowed a, a lot of money to fund this big $8 billion increase over mm -hmm. K through 12 funding. And this is year three of it or something. Mm -hmm. This year's $800 million chapter 70 increase. We're only getting the baseline increase with another hundred, with, with 200 other school districts. The, that 800 million is, is going almost entirely to the 50 or so school districts that are the you know the worst k whatever the all the english as second language and the the the, the you know the, this whatever so it's the worcesters and springfields and bostons that yeah. are getting all of that money yeah. and we're not we're just getting the baseline 30 or 40 dollars more per student and it's not it, it's really sort of not what was advertised for us we it, that that number should be much higher so mm -hmm. but it's so just, just so that people don't stop complaining to their legislators about that. That's all. Right. <laughs> right, right, right. And of course, we don't know what's going to happen in the next administration either. Right. Because hasn't Charlie Baker decided he's not going to run again? That's yes. Right. Yeah. And so we don't know what will be happening in the next in the next uh, yep. administration. So I think it's it's good to be aware of why we have a high right now, right there, for example. Yeah. And what are our average amounts over several years? Yeah. Lee, did you need to speak to the reval at all? Oh, okay. Well, I will. Um, last year's revaluation, or the Mike hasn't put figures in <laughs> that I can see too much. Uh, we do like to ask every year for five thousand dollars toward funding the next revaluation. Um, this one went well. Um, I was so happy that the increase in values and property led to a significant decrease in the tax rate, although for most of it, it's us, it is still more out of pocket, but nowhere near what it might have been. Um, and that's, that's tough. We may be increasing values again this year. The market is so incredibly aggressive right now and has been um, of the 30 properties we have pictures of up in the GP room there of sales. Eight of them sold at well over the asking price. So there were bidding wars on those that pushed the prices up. And that's just crazy. We've had our first $2 million sales, first two, two sales of a million dollars or more. That's quite a landmark for us. Um, the revaluation it was finished up on time. We paid Roy a total of $11,000 for his work, which included the revaluation, the valuation of the hydroelectric plant and the new big solar array out on Main Poland Road. He charged us very, very modestly for his work this year. I was quite thankful. Um, we could have easily paid 11,000 for just the other, the hydro plant alone. Um, he also is watching the industry very carefully, the solar industry, and follows it in probably 28 or 30 towns to, and feels that the contract that we negotiated with Nexam was for a very good price and that we're lucky to be tagged in at uh, that value per megawatt. It brought in $66,000 plus change in taxes just on the new array alone without the increase on the owner's land underneath the array. So that's a significant amount of new tax dollars coming in. That, that was include, fantastic new growth. <laughs> is, that a, is that the pilot amount as well? That's that what is the pilot, pilot is. amount. That is the mm -hmm. pilot amount? Yep. I thought that was 40. That's 66? Yep. That's, that better, nice? that's better than 40. Uh-huh. <laughs> and we have a one and a half percent annual increase on it regardless for the next 30 years. Yep. Wow. So that went well. Um, 
As far as abatements I just, are concerned. I just became a bigger fan of solar. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Jan. So. Oh, gosh. Um, Jan, do you have something? You were looking uh, like you're. Yeah, I was just wondering. I don't know of that amount coming in. It went out on the tax bill under an exam. Okay. I'll okay. look. We'll look. Yeah, we sure will. Yep. Um, as far as abatements on um, last year's uh, values are concerned, we've had about 12. I, we have not found significant reductions in value because people just were not aware of the current market. They didn't realize that their house is worth more on the market now than they had thought. Um, it's been quite an education process filling people in on this. Yeah. So let's see that process, the abatement process almost done. We have, I think, one more property to visit. We've calculated most of them. Our personal exemptions are done and ran to about twenty-eight dollars or $30,000 in refunds, uh, in, 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 in exemptions to qualified people, whether they be disabled veterans or uh, low-income seniors. We have a handful of people who file every year to be relieved of the Community Preservation Fund. That's based on income also. Um, and if you're a low income senior, you automatically have your community preservation fund eliminated uh, or refunded to you. Uh, let's see what else. The maps will be completely updated within a few months. Uh, that had rather got behind the last couple of years which I regret, but we're working along very well on that now. So, Laurie, do you think of anything offhand? No, ma'am. Okay. That we're working on? Yeah. No, nope, I think we're at the high spots. <laughs> no, no, no. As, as always, should you have questions later on, please, uh, Give me an email or something, and I'm delighted to answer them. Yep. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, you're welcome. I'm. I'm for the rest of the week at the Cape. Thank you for taking me to Thank you. Mm -hmm. I mean, we'll be doing plan on swimming at the Cape. My daughter and the grandkids, and uh, <laughs> we just got here tonight. And, uh, yeah, they're five and seven, so tomorrow's supposed to be nice. So we're going to the beach. <laughs> Good. Well, enjoy. Thank you. Thank you. We will. Good to see you again, Lee. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Lee. Nice to meet you. Thank, thank you, Lori. Thank you also, Jan. Thank, thank you, you all. Take care, everybody. See you next Bye. week. Bye-bye. <laughs>
and equipment stayed the same. So that was easy. Any questions <laughs> on that one? I have two more. Yeah, I, I like um, I like advert. I like you keeping advertising where it was and doing and doing more um, posters and banners and whatnot for town meeting and for caucus and other things. You want me? Well, the, for caucus, I can use the nurse's sign that she has to put out front of um, there. And actually, we can use the one for the town office as well. I mean, those yeah. are both. Yeah, because Lori, I don't, I don't know if if they've approached you yet, but there is sort of a ad hoc working group or just uh, two people that are interested have taken it upon themselves to increase attendance at town meeting. And, I, um, well, I saw I, the recording of that select board meeting. Well, and then, uh, yeah. Well, my question is, where are we going to put all those people? <laughs> well. <laughs> Um, yeah, the, well, first we got to get them in the door and then we can stick them in the hallway in the cafeteria, but, um, theoretically, but, or we can open the doors and some people can sit outside. The double doors, you can see there's like room for 20 people or so to sit so that you're sort of almost part of the room, but almost, but uh, yeah, you're right. And the, uh, we have in the past exceeded the fire marshal's limit once, but, um, the fire marshal, the fire He's there. The fire chief is there. So, um, but yeah, but for, well, it's, let's just see, if, you know, the, it's 365 is the seat, is the seating limit there. And, mm -hmm. um, and I think know, the most we've had is 265. Yeah. So, so we don't, yeah. so we don't really have to worry about that then. Until we, to, right. But, and, and even so having, I had a banner made when I was running and it really wasn't that expensive. I had a custom banner, banner made at Staples and I could have one done for town meetings that can be stuck on a couple of plastic push in the ground fence posts and put out there the morning of town meeting and be under a hundred dollars and then just store it away. In town office, don't we have two sandwich boards now? I think so. Or maybe no. one is the one. We have one. We've at least the nurses one. And we have one. Now, the nurses belongs to Furcock. Uh -huh. Are you sure? So, because there were notes. Tom's notes said he bought two. I thought he bought sandwich. two. No, yeah. see, you have two boards, but only, but and one stand. But you do have two boards. But the, oh. the one. Oh, okay, but only one stand. Thank you. All right. Right. Clears the one in our building belongs to Furcock. Okay. So we need another but, stand and then we'll have two. Right. Yeah. I mean, I'm allowed to borrow hers, but I wouldn't want to take it yeah. anywhere. I can, you know, I can use it and put it out front of our, you know, of the building, but I wouldn't want to take it anywhere. Yeah. And I think that they're, um, I mean, the, there, there were suggestions for a lot more signs than that for 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 the in ground signs to in in all of the little town commons in in the in, in the entry to the on the main road to into town on um you know multiple ones all around the grammar school etc cetera, etc cetera, that that it really is a thing something that um people need to be reminded of it over and over again and keep a lot of people keep saying that they meant to go but they forget and they, Wait, is, is that really the issue I, I did not watch the recording of that meeting. This was uh, one of those individuals, Nelson, Nelson Shiflett. Is that, that yep. correct? Yes, uh, yes. Uh, I, I mean, I, my experience over the years here, it's, it's usually not that people don't know about the meeting because they do get a big, nice uh, annual report with this stuff. Granted, may get stuff and may get stuck in a pile of uh, junk mail or whatever that people, but usually okay so there's young families who just can't get out uh, uh, to make that meeting and then there's a group that are just like it doesn't make a difference if i go or not and those, those are the two groups that i've and i mean how you address that 
I but think. Also, is, you have a large group that just doesn't care. Well, okay. Yeah, same type of thing. Doesn't matter if I go. It's not going to make a difference. They're going to do what they're going to do anyway, you know, something like that. And so, you know, I, I, so I guess my point is that, you know, a sandwich board or whatever, it's great. Yes, reminders are great because it's like, oh, I've got to, you see it a couple of times, especially, and it, um, you know, it makes a difference. But I think the bigger issue is, is the, the I don't care, or it's not going to make a difference. But Roy, they are organizing with the PTO, PTA to bring back babysitting. So family, that, young kids, that, both that, mom and dad can go or. That would be great. It, that it is. Be, yeah. yeah. That'll be great. Yeah. So anyway. And, and, you know, there, there's a whole thing too. We, we always need to like educate the new residents every year. And that's really the best way to do it is to sort of make, make sure that they know about it at least. And cause there's so many people that move in that don't know what a town meeting form of government is. They move from out of state. They're not from new England. And they don't get the whole thing. But um, but question, is the town clerk's budget the one that should be used to pay for a town meeting advertising? Yeah, I mean that's why that, I said that that's why I said keep that the same. So it is now. What? <laughs> <laughs> it's not. <laughs> You've always been making the signs for all these things. No, 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 no. I make the signs for elections and whatnot that are things that are under my purview. But the the town meeting is the select board thing. Select so board. the select yeah. board needs to deal with signs for town meeting. I'm cool. sorry. That comes out of your budget, Phil. Okay, well then keep keep your line item this, the, the way it is and we'll take that 350 and put it in our budget. No, no, no. It, it's 200 and 200. You know, All right. So we'll 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 take that 200 and put it in our budget. That's fine. $200 worth of signs. That's fine. <laughs> right, Veronique? Um we should, let's just say we'll make sure it gets taken care of and it, it can come out of our budget. <laughs> it, right. it, it's coming up on eight o'clock. We we have to get yes. yeah. yeah. Yes, yes. Well, luckily there's only like two line items on my other two things. Um right. for the registrars, um, I did raise their stipends up 50 bucks a piece. I went from a thousand dollars a year to twelve hundred a year. Left supplies the same five hundred dollars. Questions? No, not for me. Roy, Rihanna, have you? I don't have any. No, no questions. No questions. Um, elections, basically the same. Salaries are the same. Postage is the same. Office supplies stayed the same. Keep in mind the number is high, but that includes the programming of the cards for the automark that we're required to use for the disabled. So all the same. Yep, thank you. Well, it's gone yeah. down quite a bit, right? Yes, it has gone down tremendously because the new equipment has dropped down. And last year we had the new equipment purchase of the tabulator. This year we do not have the new mm -hmm. equipment purchase. Good. Good. Hopefully it lasts a long time. It will last a long time. <laughs> Nothing lasts a long time these days. So you have to get used to it. They may they may they maintain, they come and they maintain their machines every year. They come out, they do the automark, they do their tabulators, they they come out every year and and do full service on them. They're a great company. Good. So, and the only other thing that's off subject from these and on next week, I just wanted to make a note of is on the, um, ah, the, the, the disease variant that was on the board of health last year that we weren't- oh, The vector borne disease. Yes, yeah, yeah. the vector borne disease. I did speak with Carl. It is for rabies, rabies testing, mostly on bats. We do use it. We use it every year. You're not seeing it on the budget as being used because he said that we need to remember 
that Ginny didn't use specific line items to pay bills. She just used it as a big pot of soup <laughs> and paid whatever from whatever. Yeah, that's not how we, we do it. No, it's not how, it's not how I do things. It can't be that way. It can't right. be that But I'm not Ginny. And it's not how I do things and because I can't track things that way. It's bullshit as far as I'm concerned. Um, but it is something that we Lori, use. Lori, I looked I, back. I, what? Tell us how you really feel here. I'm sorry. I apologize. But I know that each time we test a bat, it's a $500 hit from the left. So it's something we really can't get rid of because $500 is, it's, it's a big hit for each time. So that little bit is really only three bats or three tests, whether it be a bat, a rat, a dog, a person. All rabies. Yeah, it's for rabies. You know, the, the hour is getting long, but that, that, that topic is something that we sort of should be talking about, like that, the, the way budgeting is done and the way it was whatever. Because I, I, I have a hard time believing that it made it through past Jan all those years, it, or, or, or Michael all those years, as just money coming out of a big pot of soup without regard to line item. I, 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 I um, but the, the line items have to mean something for everybody's budget. That, that, On that one, to, it, I think it's why Darren Eek and I are having such a hard time right now with the transfer station and the Board of Health and explaining where, why we need things and where we, and why we can't prove that this was supplied every year in the past because Ginny never recorded them properly. So they're just not there visibly, but we know that they're there. She did have a very, very good spreadsheet. I will say um, Ginny did, but I think the line 380 is the soup line that we're talking about. Mm -hmm. And it's hard to tease out everything that happened in 380. So we're trying to do that now. <laughs> well, thank you for that. That's uh, important detail. <laughs> yes, be before you all pass by me. <laughs> Sorry, Jan. <laughs> Okay. What you got there? We're done. Oh. I have, <laughs> I have no further questions. Uh, Roy and Rihanna, have you? No. I um, don't have a question. No further Thanks, you. guys. Okay. Well, thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you, Lori. Thank you, Jan. Thank you, Lee. Thank, thank you, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Uh, everyone have a good night. Thank okay. you. All right, see thank you next you. week. Yes, Bye. see you. Bye. Bye. See ya. I think we. We don't. Do we have anything else, Ronnie? We we have nothing. There's nope. no mail. No mail. Nope. No no announcements. Well, the announcement of um, next select board meeting next Monday night, the twenty eighth. And it's going to be early because of the caucus starting at seven. So we're going to start at five thirty. Five thirty. Okay. And and there already looks like there's a a, uh, a fair number of things on it. So we are still going to have to be quicker than we were tonight. <laughs> yes. Well, let's see. I don't think we have too many. No, it's and next week it's just Ron for the budget. So, all right, all right. So, um, with that, we can. I forget. Close the meeting. Yeah, we motion to adjourn. Motion, motion to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. Uh, we'll see you next Monday at six five thirty. Monday five thirty. Five thirty. Okay. Very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. See ya.